Hello everybody, today I'm going to be submitting my review of Block Quest Maker for the Nintendo Switch. Now Block Quest Maker is a sort of a hybrid, it's a puzzle game mixed with some RPG style elements. In fact, its genre can vary a bit, it's a little hard to pin down because what really makes it shine is the emphasis on user created levels. Now Block Quest Maker is available on other platforms including mobile. On mobile, it has a bit of a freemium model. I prefer the Switch version for its one flat rate and then unlock everything with in-game currency. It's also sometimes helpful to take advantage of the larger screens in examining some of the dungeons. Now I say sometimes it's helpful because sometimes it's also painful. Block Quest Maker clearly intends to emulate a graphic style from a bygone era. In that regard, it's mostly successful, but using the stone floor tiles with skeletons for enemies was difficult to look at. That's not the only challenging combination either. The sound isn't much better. It starts off acceptable, but quickly becomes repetitive. If you do not mind with watching for screen shakes to know when you've triggered a door to open or close or other event, you might even consider playing with the sound off. Block Quest Maker just all around is not a very aesthetically pleasing game. Where Block Quest Maker does sometimes really shine is in the gameplay. It comes with a series of levels that you are led to first by a bare bones text tor tutorial, so it kind of respects your time. The series of levels is the real tutorial, so you can learn by playing. There's also 120 challenge levels packed with the game. Some of them are pretty straightforward, while others did take me quite some time to solve. Aside from those, the highlight, and admittedly sometimes the low light of gameplay, falls to the user created portion. Each user can share up to 120 levels. Gold that is earned by diving into dungeons can be used to purchase a variety of parts to craft your own levels. Gold can also be earned just by sharing levels. You can choose to make your level free to play, or you can charge people in increments of 10 gold to challenge your level. If you do that, you receive a portion of the gold they pay, and a portion of it is kept by the guild, so to speak. And if a fellow adventurer successfully completes your level, they get a piece of it too. If you are a good level designer, you could unlock all the purchasables without ever entering a level, or if you're good at marketing your levels. Level design is not just simply placing objects either. You set triggers to open and close doors, activate traps, and otherwise change the map around. With a little imagination, there's a lot you can do within the 32 by 32 maximum grid. The only thing you would miss that way is the collecting of meat. When you spend time in levels, meat will appear in random places periodically. Once you leave the level selection screen, your character will move along a track one space for each piece of meat you found. Along the way, you will earn bonus gold and equipable items. The equipable items are entirely cosmetic. Overall, I can only give Block Quest Maker a 6.5 out of 10. It is not a terrible game by any means. In fact, I am rather enjoying it. But certainly that remains at the mercy of level designers like you. If you get a kick out of exchanging your levels with other people around the world, or competing to get the fastest times on other people's levels, then Block Quest Maker may be a good fit for you. For now at least, the replay value, if you could call it that, is exceedingly high. That may change as time goes on if people lose interest or it doesn't maintain a fan base. If you like games that look and sound pretty, however, then I would strongly encourage you to give Block Quest Maker a hard pass. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy reviews like this, give me a like, give me a comment, give me a subscribe, and I hope you all have a good day.